I lose the 10 millimeter at least once a year. Wanna know how I know this? Because I have three of them. Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, highly requested, I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide to crocheting. About a week or two ago, one of my TikToks went somewhat viral, which is new to me because it's never happened. And I was at work and I opened TikTok up and it said that I had 2,000 new followers on TikTok and I'm like, what's going on? Well, it was um, my one video right here where I was just showing what I've crocheted, such as this fine specimen. And a lot of the comments, there was, there was a lot of comments and they were all saying, do you have a video about like, you know, beginning crocheting? And I've never made one mainly because I'm just like, well, there's so many other videos on the internet teaching you how to crochet. Why would anyone want to pick my video? Well, you guys want to see it, so here it is. So this video is pretty much just beginner basics, learning your basic stitches, learning what yarn to use, learning your crochet hooks, learning how to read your yarn packaging to know what you need for the project. Nothing complicated, not going to go into anything crazy. I just really want to teach you guys the basics of crocheting because once you learn the basic three stitches, stitches, st stitches, stitch is, stitches. Once you learn the basic stitches, you pretty much can make anything. And then all the fancier types of stitches, they kind of relate back to the basics. So once you learn the basics, things will get a lot easier, such as this here. It might look complicated, but it's pretty much made out of double crochets, all double crochets. So once you learn that, figuring out how to make something like this will be a breeze for you. I don't know where to start. I've never actually had to teach like a tutorial of like everything you need. And I know I'm gonna leave things out because I have a book. It's my book. And I've written so many notes for this and I know I'm going to leave things out. Do you want to do a video, another video, answering your questions? There's something in this video that I've left out that you're curious about crocheting, such as maybe what brand I use for hooks and yarn, stuff like that. Then leave it in the comments below because I would love to do a video where I just answer your basic questions about crocheting, something that maybe wouldn't be involved in a tutorial, like where do I buy my yarn? How much yarn should I buy for a project? I'm not going to really cover that in this video, but if that is something you really want to know, leave it in the comments below and I would love to do a separate video where I'm just answering crocheting questions. Starting this off, your hooks. I keep them in this little tiny cat pouch. A bunch of little cats and, and desserts on it. So these are some of my crochet hooks. They're not all the crochet hooks, but these are the crochet hooks that I think I use the most. Crochet hooks come in all different sizes. I think the smallest one I have here here is a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Again, the smaller ones are more for, I feel like a conductor holding this in my hand. Yeah, the smaller the crochet hook, the more finer the work you're doing. Maybe making lace or little like doilies. Here's a tip, the smaller the yarn, the smaller the crochet hook you're gonna need to use. These three here are the main ones I use. I love the five millimeter crochet hook. This is also a US H8. I use it for a like all my projects. What I'm wearing here, that's what I used. I think all my projects on my channel, I have just only used the five millimeter crochet hook. The other ones are the eight and the 10 millimeter. And I have to say, I lose the 10 millimeter at least once a year. Wanna know how I know this? Cause I have three of them. They're all different. Cause every time I lose one, I'm like, oh, well I wanna buy a new one, but I don't wanna buy the exact same one. So I buy a different one. I think I started off with this plastic one, lost it. Ended up buying this metal one, lost it. Then I ended up buying this bamboo one. I also lost that one a few months ago. And at one point I had lost all three of my 10 millimeter crochet hooks. How does that happen? Don't know. That's why you have to keep all your crochet hooks together. Find one, you find all of them, unless you lose the container that they're in. Cause uh, that would not be fun. And has happened to me before. If you're buying crochet hooks for the very first time, I know they sell them in kits and usually they're about like 20, $30. If you go to Michael's, that's usually where I buy all my stuff because Canada only has Michael's. They also have Fabricland. Fabricland's kind of pricey. I don't have Joanne and I don't have Hobby Lobby. So I don't have any of those here. So I have to buy everything at Michael's and you can use a coupon at Michael's. So that's, that's why I usually go there. If you are starting crocheting, there's like so many different styles of hooks you can get. Like the ones I showed you, there's plastic, there's metal, there's bamboo. There's the ones with like the little grips on them. I don't really like the grippy ones, but yeah, I definitely suggest if you are starting a project, buy one hook at a time. Cause I don't want you to invest say $20 in say the metal hooks. And it turns out you don't like the metal hooks, you prefer a bamboo hook or you prefer the ones with the grip on it. See what hook fits you the best. I love metal like this 
gold five millimeter crochet hook. If I were to lose this, I would be devastated. I would have to go out and buy a new one because I use this one for literally everything. So here are all the different hooks that I have, just so you can see the comparison in size. And these are the three different types of hooks that I do own. You've seen the hooks I use. Now I'm going to show you three different yarns that I currently own because I'm not going to go out and buy all the different colorings of yarn because I don't need all of them. I'm going to start off with the yarn that I bought today because I am currently working on yet another project which is in here. It's, it's this. I made a video on how to make this a few months ago and I have yet to finish the project it belongs to. So that's going to come shortly. And this is impeccable. I use impeccable for everything. I don't think it's the best yarn out there. It does have a lot of colors and they do keep a lot of the colors in stock like all the time. Impeccable usually will have the color you want. They have a variety of colors, but also if you run out, there's a 95% chance that they're gonna have a bunch of the color you need in stock. The color here is uh, Soft Rose. Not that you need to know that, but if you like the color, that's what it is. It will actually tell you everything you need to know. Now, usually on all yarn, they do have a free pattern that's inside. I'm not gonna teach you how to read a pattern because, um, I don't really know how to read a pattern. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I usually see something and then just make it up as I go. And if you have watched a lot of my videos of me doing things, that is my way. Right underneath it, it will say medium four. That is the weight of your yarn. It will tell you the knitting needle size if you're knitting. And then it will also give you your crochet hook. This one here is the five millimeter US H8. And then it just tells you, you know, your washing instructions and stuff like that. If you're starting a project, and you pick up a color that you like and you read it and you're like oh it's a five millimeter crochet hook then you know that you either need to buy a five millimeter or if you already have one at home you know which size to use for what yarn it is important that you do use the right crochet hook for the size of yarn because if you were to use a smaller crochet hook for this then your stitches will be very very tight and it'll be kind of hard to crochet but also on the opposite side if you were to use a crochet hook that is way too big for your yarn then it will be very stretched out I mean again unless this is the look you're going for definitely read the label so you know what to use also a five millimeter crochet hook and a medium four weight is pretty much like the standard for crocheting and what i mean by that the most common the most used i think all the crochet patterns that i have used on my channel except for i think the bandana that i made which was like my first crochet tutorial and watching that back i'm like oh my goodness pretty much all my projects are the medium four weight yarn with a five millimeter crochet hook if you are starting crocheting that's probably the most common the yarn for that is probably the cheapest if you use like thicker yarn it does get a little bit more pricey speaking of thicker yarn I also have this here so they are both loops and thread but it's like the impeccable loops and thread and this one is the charisma I think that's how you pronounce it loops and loops and thread this one here is bulky and it actually does say bulky on it it's bulky it's a five and then it is an eight millimeter or a US L11. This here I actually do use a 10 millimeter on. 8 and 10, there's a difference, but it's not too big of a difference that you can't really just swap them out. This thicker, chunky yarn, I have used 10 millimeter on it in the past, and it turns out great for what I want to do. Again, it's your own personal preference. And then we go to the opposite side. I have this one here, which is a very thin yarn, and this is the Patons Astra collection. Love this color. This color is apricot. I think I've used this so many times on my little cup cozies. Anywho, this is a light three and it would use a four millimeter crochet hook because it is a lot smaller. And here are the differences in the yarn sizes. The more you crochet, the faster you will get. Last year at this time when I was crocheting, I was not the quickest and now I'm working on a current project and I got a sleeve done of it in like one sitting and usually it would take me like a few sittings to do it and I'm sitting for like two, three hours. So as you crochet, you will get faster. So just letting you know, you know, things are going pretty slow at first. You're just getting used to how to crochet. Eventually your hands will just know what they're doing and you'll get things done in a blink of an eye. Another thing I do want to cover is what the yarn is made out of. The most common is acrylic 
you have cotton and you have wool. Most of my projects, such as this one here, I use acrylic yarn. I really like it. It's not itchy. It's not too warm. I mean, it can be warm depending on what I make and where I wear it to and if it's pretty hot outside. I just like it. But if you are actually going to be making anything such as maybe like a pot holder or a kettle cozy, I don't know if anyone uses those anymore. I grew up with them. It's where you make like a cozy and you put it on your kettle to keep warm. I would highly suggest do not use acrylic. Acrylic will melt. Please do not be putting something hot on this. If you want to make something to put like a kettle on or to put a hot pan on, use cotton. I think you can also use wool. Just don't use acrylic. Yeah, that's just a little safety tip. So a few other things that you might want to have in your little collection of crochet things is one, a little tiny yarn needle. It is plastic. I mean, I think you can get wooden. I think you can get metal. Having a yarn needle is really great for when you're tying in your ends because you can put your yarn through like a sewing needle and kind of like weave it in and then pull it through. Also when you're like closing things such as if you're making yourself a hat you would get to the tail end and then you would like weave it through like the top and you would pull it tightly, close your hat up. But again, you don't need them for like every single project. They're just good to have on hand because you can also use a crochet hook to weave your ends in. Another thing is you want to get yourself a pair of scissors just for yarn. If you're a sewer, you also want to have a certain pair of scissors for fabric and you don't want to use those scissors for anything else. I like to do the same thing for my yarn. If the scissors do get dull, they'll probably fray your ends and that will just be hard to weave in, right? I probably should stop wheeling these scissors around like a crazy person. Definitely have a pair of scissors on hand because you will need it for every single project. I think that's the basic of the tools you'll need and what type of yarns you'll use. So now I'm going to show you the basic stitches, how to start it, your chaining, your slip knot, your slip stitches, your single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, and triple crochet. Although just letting you know the triple crochet isn't used that often, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. I think that's pretty much it for me showing you like my face. So let's get right into learning the stitches. Now before I show you the four basic stitches, I'm going to show you how to start off a project. Different types of... This is what happens when I don't have a script. To start the project, I'm going to be making a slip knot. So with my right hand, I'm going to grab the tail end. So the working yarn is connected to the ball of yarn and the tail is the end, end of the yarn. You're going to scoop underneath the working yarn. You're going to grab the working yarn with your right hand and you make an X. You're like this. You make an X and you put three fingers, two fingers and a thumb through, and then you're going to grab the working yarn. So you're not, you're never letting go of that tail. You're going to grab the working yarn and you're just going to pull it through like this. Still holding on to the tail, you're going to grab the working yarn and you're going to pull tightly. Insert your hook and then pull tight. Do you like to have a little bit of a tail? Now we're gonna do something called chaining and then this, I don't have an example. I do have an example. Where is my example? I always like showing you guys examples of what I'm doing. Where we are right now is we're at like this very beginning here. So we're gonna have to make a chain and the chain is just a row that we can build off of and continue our crocheting. So it's this kind of little chain right here is what we're working on right now. This is probably the simplest thing for crocheting. You're going to Hold your hook in your dominant hand, so that could be your right or your left hand. I'm right-handed, so everything is done in my right hand. And then I'm going to take the working yarn and I'm just gonna loop it over, just draping it over my crochet hook. And when I pull through, what's great about crocheting is that because it's a hook, right? So your yarn gets caught in it. The yarn you wanna pull over will go over. To chain, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit closer so you can see a bit better. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. When you yarn over, your hook catches the yarn that you're yarning over, and then you're pulling through the only loop that is connected to your chain. Yarn over, and you pull through. Yarn over, pull through. You want to have like the right consistency of when you're making your chains because you don't want them to be too tight and you don't want them to be too loose because if they're too loose it's just gonna look weird and if it's too tight you're not gonna be able to work with it. It looks like a braid almost. 
I usually do this chain regardless if you're doing a single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, treble crochet, all the different crochets. You're always gonna start off with a chain. And I mean, I guess if you go into granny squares, it's gonna be a little bit different. Actually, you know what? You do have to start off with a chain in granny squares. So like, you need to learn how to chain. For the basic 101 of crocheting, I'm not going to be doing a big project. I'm actually going to be doing a bunch of little tiny projects like this. That way you can see all the different sizes and how they look compared to each other. Now, when you get to the end of whatever project you're working on, you're going to want to do a turning chain. Your project called for doing 20 chains this way. You're going to do 21. If it asked you to do 30 chains, you're going to do 31 and that one is so then that way when you move back over you have to skip the last chain you did and work your way back that is why you have to add the extra chain because you add to skip one if that makes sense we're going to add our extra chain at the end and then moving back this here we're gonna skip and we're gonna go into this one skipping this and we're just inserting into the top stitch we have your top stitch and we have the bottom stitch the top stitch is facing away from you the bottom stitch is facing towards you we are going to skip that extra stitch that we had just made insert into the next one you're going to yarn over pull through one loop yarn over pull through two this is a single crochet so that's one we're going to go into the next one here Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook into the next one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. This is kind of what it's looking like. And you're gonna repeat this step all the way down to the end and then we have to turn around and come back. All right now that you've gotten to the end, you're going to do your turning chain, which is just an extra chain at the end, and you're gonna flip over your project. And now we get to work this way. For the first row we did, I only went into one loop, but now that we have two loops at the top, I'm gonna to be going through both of them. As you can see, there's one on this side and one on this side, and I'm gonna be going through both of them. After I did my extra chain, I'm going to skip this guy here, and I'm gonna go into the next one, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. We're doing the exact same steps that we did for the first row, but instead of only going through one loop, we're going through two loops. You're going to insert your hook through both. You're going to yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. This yarn sometimes, I swears. And from here, you're just repeating the steps. When you get to the end, you add your extra chain, you turn it around, you skip it, and you continue on with your single crochets, and you just keep repeating until you are done your project. This is what a single crochet looks like. Now, you're gonna wanna get your pair of scissors, and you're gonna wanna cut your working end. I like to leave a little bit of a tail. To finish it, you're going to yarn over. So once once it's all cut up, you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull it all the way through. And then I like to tighten it just like that. This step is where your yarn needle comes in, but you can also still use your crochet hook. I'll show you two ways because we have two tails. So we have this tail at the bottom and this tail at the top. I'm gonna show you the yarn needle way. What I usually do is I'll stick my thread or my thread, uh, it's sewing, what is this? It's yarn, I'm gonna stick the yarn through the yarn needle and then I'm going to weave it in to my project. And most likely if you're using multiple colors, whatever your tail is, you wanna go into the same color. Okay, so if I'm weaving it through like this and then I can pull it through. So it's just like sewing. And then I'll cut the tail. So that's one way to do it. The other way is I like to put my crochet hook in and weave my crochet hook and then yarning over the tail and then pulling through. And then you cut your end. That's how I do it. I'm not the best with hiding my ends. 
Now we're working on the half double. The steps to make your chain are going to be the exact same that I just did for our single crochet. Did my chain. With the half double crochet, again it is different than the single crochet and it's different than the double crochet. On the single crochet, you know how we added the extra chain for our turning chain? Well because we're going up a size, we're actually going to chain two extra. I've watched a lot of crocheting videos and some people will add two chains on the end for a half double and some people add one. I'm not too sure exactly what's what, but I add two. So when you get to the end of whatever you're going, if you're doing 30, you're going to do 32. If you're doing 40, you're going to do 42 chains. You're going to chain your extra two at the end and now we're going to work our way back. To start off, we're actually going to yarn over and we're going to go into the third chain. We're going to skip one. We're gonna skip two. We're gonna go into the third one. So having our yarn over, this is the first step that's a little different than the single crochet. You're gonna insert your hook into that chain. Then you're gonna yarn over. You're gonna pull through one, very similar to the single crochet. But now we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull through all three. There we go. The only time we're skipping is when we're on our ends, but when we're doing it within the row, we're not skipping any of these. So you're gonna yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through three. Yarning over, going into the next stitch, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over yet again, pulling through all three. You're gonna continue this until you get to the end of whatever your project is or if you're just like me and testing it out on a few little scrap pieces of yarn. Just continue doing this until you get to the end. Now that we're at the end, I'm going to chain two. One, two. Well, the reason why I'm chaining is that this kind of counts as your first crochet and it's building the height of your stitches. Flip your work over. You're gonna skip the two chains that you had just made and you're gonna go into the next stitch. So there's one chain, two chain. So that's when you're gonna go into. But before we do that, we gotta yarn over. So we're skipping one, skipping two, going into the third one. So that's like the first stitch on our row. You're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. We're going through both the loops at the top. Again, you're gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch here, just like this. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. You can kind of see that little stitch I made here is building the height. Otherwise your project is gonna go like a little slanted on the ends if you don't build your height. To be honest, I learned this a lot later in my crocheting life than I care to omit. You're gonna yarn over, insert into both, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And this is the exact same steps that we had just done for the row underneath. Now that I'm at the end, cutting my working yarn, I'm yarning over and pulling through. This is what a half double crochet looks like. Now it's time to learn the double crochet. So I've already made my chain. All these different stitches start off with your basic chain. So for the double crochet, the same as the half double, I'm chaining two extra at the end. Then I'm gonna skip those two and I'm gonna go into the third one. But First, I have to yarn over, then I'm gonna count one, two, three, go into the third one. I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pull through one. Now this is where it differs a little bit from the half double, because for the half double you would yarn over and pull through all three, but for the double you're yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two more. Again, you're gonna yarn over, go into the very next stitch, Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. So again, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. But you're at the end, you're going to chain two, one, two. I'm gonna flip my yarn around. So now we're going back. Of course, we're not gonna do anything with this chain because this is our turning chain, AKA our first crochet. And I'm not gonna go into 
this first stitch right here because this stitch here is part of that chain. Now, yes, clearly on the chain that I made, there are three extra chains instead of two. That is my bad. There's only supposed to be two. I'm realizing this now. So this whole thing is one crochet. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm just going to skip the first one and go right into the second one, just like that. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you can kind of see that chain is building its height. Again, if you don't build your height, your stitches are gonna be on a slant. Going to yarn over, and I'm gonna go into the next stitch. So I'm going through both of those pieces of yarn there. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. And that is the double crochet. For the triple, I am gonna be chaining three. One, two, three. I'm gonna count over one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna be working in the fourth little loop there. Now for the triple, I'm actually gonna be yarning over not once, but two times. So you got a little bit of a spiral going on. That's the first step for the triple. I'm gonna skip one, two, three, insert into the fourth loop. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull through one. Now I have four loops. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull through two. Now I have three loops. I'm gonna yarn over again, pull through two. Now I got two loops. Now I'm gonna yarn over, pull through those two, and now I have one loop. That is one triple crochet. Now I'm gonna yarn over again twice, go into the very next stitch here, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again, yarn over, pull through two more. Yarning over twice, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more, and then yarn over and pull through two more. This is what the stitch is looking like. I will continue until the end and then I'll show you how to turn it back around. So the next step is I'm going to chain three. One, two, three, turn my work over, yarn over twice, skip that first stitch here because again that first stitch and this chain here is just building your height I'm gonna skip that stitch into the next one remember we're going into both of them because we're on our second row yarning over pulling through I'm gonna do this again yarn over twice insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two more. This stitch here is a looser stitch that's more holy. If you want a looser sweater or a scarf, this could be the stitch that you might want to use. I personally prefer doing a single crochet. I just like how it looks. Do your research on what type of crochet stitch you like the best, because nothing is worse than finishing a project and realizing, ooh, I don't like the double crochet. I probably should have just done the single crochet. And that is how the triple looks. Now there are a lot more techniques, but I just wanted to show you the basic ones that you'll probably come across more often in the projects that you would like to do. This technique I'm gonna show you is how to do a slip stitch. This will probably come in handy when you're connecting two pieces together, or maybe you just wanna do like a little like simple trim or something. So to do a slip stitch, all you're doing is you're gonna go into both of your stitches like this. It's very similar to the single crochet. Insert your hook, yarn over once, and then what I like to do is I like to sandwich the loop that is currently, let's zoom in there a little bit, currently on my hook to the project, just kinda like this, right? Taking my hook over the yarn and pulling through everything. You're gonna go through, you're gonna yarn over, sandwich the two pieces together, pull through. So that's a slip stitch. It's just one less step than a single crochet, yarning over, pulling through everything. And that is how to do a slip stitch. And like I said, it is more used for when you want to like put two things together. So I'll just quickly show you what I mean by that. So here's this 
piece that I was working on and then I decided not to work on it anymore because I have other things to do. What I'll do is I'll sandwich the pieces together and I'll go through this in here, I'll yarn over and then I'll pull through everything. You go through your loops, you yarn over, you pull through everything. I know these are very uh, traditional baby colors and I didn't really realize it. The blue I never really used and the pink I was using for a different project and then I decided to do something different with the different project. Still using pink, but anywho, you will eventually see that in the future. All right, so you just keep going and going and going. And that way when you flip it over, they're connected together like this. That's typically what I use a slip stitch for is just connecting two pieces together. Normally it's when I do granny squares that I have to connect all the granny squares together. So that's kind of what I do. And so I just wanted to quickly show you the thicker yarn that I was talking about. And I used an eight millimeter crochet hook on here. So this is a single crochet on the thicker yarn. And this is a single crochet on the thinner yarn. This I only did like two rows and this I did four rows. And it all depends on what type of project you want to do. If you want it to be like thicker and cozier then go with the thicker yarn. But if you want it to be a little bit more lightweight, I mean, it is yarn, it is, it is going to be a little warm. Then you can go with the thinner yarn. So it just all depends on your project. And those are the stitches, the basic ones that you're going to need. Again, when you feel more comfortable into diving into more complex projects, there are other stitches and other techniques that you will learn. But once you know, like the single and the double, like I feel like those are the most common stitches in everything. Again, this whole thing was just double crochets. Believe it or not, this was just all double crochets, but it wasn't a granny square. But I do have a tutorial for this if you want to learn how to do this one. Again, if there's something that I just didn't mention, or you're still kind of curious about, leave it in the comments below because I do want to do a video where I'm just answering your basic crocheting questions. I think that is it. If you are new to my channel and you like sewing, crafting, and mainly thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it, so y'all have a good day now.